Hello, my name is Mage, and welcome to Black and White Thinking. Welcome back, probably, being that this is a video halfway through a series. This will be my review, and thoughts, on issue 3 of the Eat Bang Kill Tour by T. Franklin and Max Sarin. This video is going to be slightly different in setup for two reasons. One, I'm not going to go chronologically this time, I'm going to break up my opinions via likes, dislikes, etc. But also because I haven't actually written a script. These videos are kind of small and don't require much research, they're basically opinion based and in order to save myself some time to focus on videos that require hours and hours of research. I'm not going to write a script for this like I did the last two, I just have my notes and we're going to wing it. If I sound like I'm making this all up on the spot, it's because I am. Mostly, like I said, I have notes. Pages of notes. Anyway, let's just do this. So this issue of the Eat Bang Kill Tour has a strange bookend. It basically follows Harley and Ivy as they try to have their first date and are interrupted by Hush. But Harley tells the story backwards. You start the date, you work your way back to earlier in the day where we left them in issue two, and then we go back to the date. Anyway, the plot otherwise is uh, pretty simple. Harley and Ivy go on their first date and things go terribly, as we can just expect them to at this point, I guess. Firstly, I'm going to go through all of the things I did like about this issue. Start simple with two things that I tend to praise every issue. The art, it's amazing, I love their outfits in this issue. The goddess imagery put into Ivy. She looks like Medusa, that's really fucking cool and important to me. Harley looks super cute. Every face they pull is just incredible. I just love the art. The art is like absolutely hands down the best part of these comics. I like the Jealous Girlfriend meme rip off in the art. That was good. I like all the background characters. I like how queer and colourful it is. There's a lot of representation in these comics that just is missing in comics generally. There is no reason why your crowds need to be all white cishet people. And I really like that these comics include queer people that aren't just Harley and Ivy. For example, in this issue, they were helped by a queer black person called Rain, who helped them escape. I love that, big fan. I liked the use of old nicknames, Peanut, Pamela, perfect. Weird that the show hasn't used them more. I love seeing Batman supporting Harley and Ivy in a very strange way. I liked seeing Nightwing. I liked seeing two bi women who are a couple talk about how nice that man's butt is. Although, how old is Dick supposed to be in this canon? Because Barbara's like 19. Anyway, cougars. Also, one more point related to my first point. I really enjoy how much gay sex and just making out and I don't know, shit like that there is in these comics. It's important and I need more of it and we better see it in the show. Okay, dislikes, because I'm not gonna lie, this issue definitely gave me more dislikes than likes. Let's just talk about them and then I'm gonna talk about Ivy's relationship as a whole because I also have lots of feelings about that. So, Hush was underwhelming. He could have been anyone, and it's weird that Ivy didn't know who he was. Personally, playing Hush as a homophobe and misogynist is like, yeah, I get it, but do you get it? Gordon. Gordon is starting to feel a little out of character. I get why he's the bad guy, but like, he's not just some random cop. He's Jim Gordon. We've known him through every other canon for like 50 years. And the point at which he points a gun at his daughter in this issue really just... Sorry, what? You know? He's kind of also just getting in the way of the plot, generally, like, getting in the way of Harley and Ivy doing anything. And I know, again, they need a villain to move against, but... Fuck me. Chill. He's not the only character either. A lot of the characters feel a little out of character. 
they feel clunky and as someone that has spent way too much time obsessing about how Harley and Ivy's relationship is written in any canon, but especially this one, I can sniff when it's a bit off. And it is a bit off. It's not irredeemable, but I have some issues. Ivy specifically is feeling a little bit cold. And this Ivy isn't cold. Ivy generally isn't cold, especially not with Harley. And I know that this has all taken place over the course of one day, but I think that's the issue. Having the first three issues of this comic essentially happen over the course of one day makes it the busiest and most chaotic day of Ivy's life. And it would be strange for her to be acting well at this point, but it's not like what people signed up for especially straight after season two of the show. The writing's a bit thickish, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I write thick, fix fine. I just mean it's own interpretation-ish. It feels uncanny valley, like it's the next universe over. I can tell it's a different writing team, and I don't think I'm the only one. And there's nothing wrong with that, but when you are really into these characters in the state they exist in within the show, it can be kind of jarring because this isn't necessarily the Harley and Ivy that we fell in love with in the show. Okay, so their relationship and how it's portrayed in this issue. I have feelings. I think a lot of people had feelings. I get the vibe from what I've read online that a lot of people found this issue to be a little divisive and I don't blame them. It wasn't great in places. Now, I do think T. Franklin understands queer storytelling. I do not necessarily think she understands Harley and Ivy specifically. So she's writing a lot of what I do want to see from this story. But there are certain intrinsic character traits that I think she's missing out on. Probably because she hasn't watched the show 300 times like I have, which, fair. However, didn't love how Harley and Ivy spoke to each other in this issue. There are very few times in Harley and Ivy canon where I've ever really taken issue with how they talk to each other on a face-to-face -face basis. They have communication issues, I don't think anyone will deny that, but they're genuinely kind to each other. I think part of the issue with Ivy is that in the show, she can look like the normal one when she is surrounded by Harley and the gang and Kite Man and just Gotham's idiots. In this comic, when it's just her and Harley, I think part of the issue with T's interpretation is that Ivy remains the same. She's still acting as if everyone else was still around. Ivy's behavior changes when she's with Harley. Ivy presents herself to the world as one thing and she presents herself to Harley Quinn as another. One of the most important parts of Harley and Ivy's relationship and honestly, almost all of my favourite ships, now I think about it, is that Ivy hates everyone except Harley. Harley is the exception. And when she shouts at her in the toilet over something really stupid, when she blows hot and cold, black and white, tush, when she says, can you just be normal for once? When she turns around to Nightwing and was like, actually, Harley was thinking this time. That's a lot. Like, pull it back a bit. The absolute harshest thing that Ivy should ever say in this canon to Harley is what was said at her wedding. That was her lowest point. She shouldn't be going lower at this point. Like Ivy's character arc needs to rise or people are going to fall flat on their faces watching it. It deflates her. She needs to progress beyond this. And we're three issues in, so can we get there please? It's also just a bit toxic to have her blowing up, fucking, blowing up, fucking, blowing up, fucking. Like, Harley and Ivy talk to each other and waiting for that moment and being interrupted by Hush and Jim Gordon and Ivy's rage is a little infuriating at this point. I don't know, Ivy should never ever call Harley dumb or crazy and actually mean it. And not even just for Ivy's sake, but because that's integral to Harley's character too. There is only one person that she can trust to call her out on her shit, but also be kind in the process. And that is Ivy. And if Harley can't trust Ivy, Harley can't trust anyone and she will go back to the Joker. That's, that's how this works. It's how it's worked for almost 30 years now. I 
I just want more for them. I want them to be happy. We've just watched two seasons of them struggling to find each other to get to this point. Now they're there, can we let them enjoy it for a little while? Just a moment of peace. I talk about this in my season three prediction video. I say that I want silliness and a moment where they're just a sitcom couple doing something stupid and sitcommy. The consistent fighting is just not very them. That being said, I did love that these scenes were set at a fun fair for many reasons. I enjoyed the image of them painting each other's entire bodies in foundation in order to look human-ish for their date. A nice flashback to Riddler U, which is a good episode. I loved Tarzan Ivy. I loved Kinky Harley. I always love Kinky Harley. I just hope in the last half of this series, plot isn't prioritised over character more than it already has been, because nobody really cares about Jim Gordon at the end of the day. Like, this is a character plot driven show. It's about Harley changing, it's about Ivy changing, it isn't about saving the world from Jim Gordon, you know? And remembering the themes and like the genuine heart of why people like the show will make any interpretation better, in my opinion. And there are a few final things that I'm going to label curiosities that I just want to wrap up on. One, Batgirl mentions Stephanie. Is she talking about Clayface or is she talking about Stephanie? Like Stephanie Brown. I just want to know, is Clayface going back to university or is Steph in the canon? Neither of these things make sense to me, so I'm curious. Also, are we supposed to assume that Falcone fucked them over here? Is he the one that's setting up the tracker? Is he helping Gordon? I don't know, who tracked them? Is that Vixen? We know Vixen is coming. I don't really know where this plot is going. Again, I don't necessarily think this comic needed heavy plot. This comic could have been an extension of the Themyscira episode and literally everyone would have been happy for it. I think some of this plot would have been better reserved for a Harley and Ivy story that wasn't in this canon. And hopefully T. Franklin and Max Sarin continue to get jobs at DC and can write more queer stuff for us that isn't just part of the Harley Quinn animated show canon. Okay, that's basically it. I didn't have a script here, so this video, again, is definitely going to be clunky, but it's just my thoughts on Eat, Bang, Kill, so who really cares? Let me know how you think I did, making shit up on the spot. Stay safe, catch you in the next one. Mage out.